Hey folks, Jim from Slick Audio. I almost said Slick Cyber Systems, I'm from there too, but uh, Slick Audio. Um, hey, uh, been back for a week and a half from NAM, and um, I haven't gotten a chance to uh, to show off uh, the triplets. Um, Julio Negrini, GNG Guitars, Master Luthier, amazing guy, and, uh, and Dr. Viosi, oh my god almighty, you want to hear a good guitar player. I mean nothing compared to that. Um, anyway, um, this is uh, this is one of the triplets. Um, we call them the triplets because we did all of them in an amaranth purple heart top, um, and uh, they are highly figured mahogany bodies, and I mean highly figured. Uh, they are roasted flame maple necks. Let's see by the back of this. I uh, guess I like it unfinished, so that's an unfinished neck. Mm -hmm. And then we did um, ebony fretboard, and then actually these, uh, you'll see the uh, bullseyes are uh, power abalone on the outside, purple heart on the inside. Um, so, uh, and this is a fan fret six string. So uh, we had three done. Uh, one is uh, the JSFF, sorry, JS6F, which is this, F standing for fan fret. We have a JS7F, which is a seven string, just like this fan fret, and then a JF, JS6FR, uh, meaning Floyd Rose. Um, so it's uh, a non fan fret, just, uh, straight fret, fan fret uh, Floyd Rose. I can talk. Um, all are running the same uh, pickup combos, um, and it's my pretty much my set that I use uh, on just about every guitar I own. And that's an EMG 81, and the bridge position, neck position is an EMG 60. Um, I like the tone of the 60. I have that on right now. Um, just a really nice, crystal clear. and bluesy when you want it to be roll roll some tone back and so it needs stuff um, of course you have the 81 60. A lot less mid range if you notice in the 60. And then you run in between and, and run both pickups. Uh, nice and full. So you do get the extra mid range if you uh, so desire it or not. Uh, it's actually kind of nice in the middle position. You roll the, the uh, tone back a hair. I'm, I'm gonna go kick my uh, tone control back up again go back to my 60 um, I am running uh, this amp that we're listening to you really can't see it it's kind of behind uh, where Chris is who's uh, filming this with the uh, high, super high quality iPhone 7 plus <clears throat> Not. Um, the uh, it's an angle e670 uh, special edition el34 um, I like that amp with the L34s uh, in it. Just uh, you'll hear the crunch here in a minute and find out why. Four channel head. Uh, I am running the uh, Pro 412 cabinet, not the XXL, the regular Pro 412 cabinet, which is a 16 ply uh, Baltic Birch cab uh, with v uh, V30s, vintage 30s in it, which is uh, my speaker of uh, choice and preference. Um, the only uh, device that is a, uh, that are devices, excuse me, that are attached to it. Um, it's coming out of my cable here and uh, going into a, uh, a uh, Morpheus uh, drop tune, which is not on right now. It's completely off. As a matter of fact, yeah, yeah, it's completely off. It's out of uh, circuit. Um, and then it goes into a Digitech Whammy. 
uh, which is it's a whammy four, and that is also turned off right now, needless to say. And uh, then it goes into, last but not least, a Mesa Tone Burst, which is nothing more than a boost pedal. Um, and I use that for the guitars that I don't have uh, my EMG afterburners on. This does have an EMG guitar, does have EMG afterburner in it, so I'll show that to you in a second. And other than that, it goes straight into the guitar, or straight into the amp, and uh, then out of the effects loop, uh, serial effects loop, um, it's, that one does have a parallel as well. I use the serial. It goes into a Fractal X FX2 and uh, back in again. And um, then I can use uh, some various presets. You'll see I've got a uh, uh, the 101 uh, controller, MFC 101 um, MIDI controller um, for the Fractal. So it's Fractal Audio as well. Um, so that's a pretty typical rig for me, pretty typical setup. Uh, no matter what head or what amp I'm using, uh, that would be uh, pretty much it. So this one, this uh, Ganymede, uh, always one of my favorite uh, presets. They take it and tweak it a hair, but... Uh... It's one of those that just swells in nice. And yes, I have a volume pedal I could be doing that with, but... I'm so used to doing it on stage with my volume knob that uh, old habits die hard, man. <laughs> and old men tend to, uh, to run it. Anyways, um, let's uh, let's hear the crunch of this bad boy. Oh, the EMG afterburner, for, for those of you who are interested in hearing it. Um, let me go back to the straight clean. So that would be... Uh, uh, up is on actually for the afterburner, but I'm all the way down, so I'm at zero dB boost. It is variable up to 20. So you can hear when I'm starting to hit the amp with a 20 dB boost, I'm actually getting that overdrive because I'm just pounding it with, with more gain. Really the same concept as hitting it with that Mesa Tone Burst down there. So. So when you're, you know, if I'm in the middle of a solo or something and I just need a little bit more edge, a little bit more gain, um, I, I'll rarely ever take it up to top. Uh, I'm usually nudging it about a third to 50% um, of the way up. So, uh, you know, I guess that would be, uh, geez, anywhere from six, five, six, seven dB boost up to about 10, 11 uh, dB boost. That's typically where I'm at if I do use it. Um, and again, it depends on the song. Um, the uh, Mesa Tone Burst, uh, almost indiscernible to uh, to uh, to the EMG afterburner. So why reach for a pedal and walk across the stage when you can just grab it on your guitar and go, Boop. and you could have it preset to the volume you want and just literally just pull it out. And when you're done, bang, back in again. So really nice and uh, I, I mean, I again, most of my guitars have these in them, so. Uh, anyways, without any further ado, I'm going to kick it up a notch here uh, and go to a crunch channel. I love the crunch channel of this angle. I think this angle has the single best crunch channel of any amp I've ever played and listened to. Um, I've got a gentleman uh, in Italy that's, uh, that's going to be making me an amplifier here uh, in the next uh, month or two. And... Um, I'll tell you more about him later and what the amp company is. Uh, well, the amp company is BRBS, but uh, uh, Sebastiano is uh, is going to be supposedly working on a, a clean, uh, the clean of this angle and the crunch of this angle, and then mixed with the the two channels or, or a channel, if you will, of like my Mark Fives, which I really like a singy thing. So I'm going to kind of get the two of them combined, and it's all MIDI controllable. Um, it, it, uh, more later, but uh, that's going to be a pretty brutal piece. Uh, but it's just nice. It's edgy. It's it's bitey, but yet it's not over the top. Now, kick in the EMG afterburner and start to goose it. You get tons of sustain. But everything that you were kind of looking for, there's all the way. 
almost like a modded, wide open Marshall. Pretty wild, pretty wild. So uh, then uh, we kick into channel three. This is, like I said, is a four channel ahead. Nice punchy sound. Um, it's uh, it, it's unique. It's it's not really Marshall. It's not really. It doesn't sound like anything else other than an angle. Um, that's pretty much all I can say. So I have a lead channel that uh, I use with that. Um, it, it's my lead one, which is really based off channel three. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's just a good, 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 good sound and lead. It's uh, there's a lot of note definition there. Um, I'm gonna kick uh, the uh, afterburner up here. <laughs> bite to her. Then I do have a channel um, channel four, which is uh, old dirty bastard. Here. A lot darker, uh, the least way I have it dialed in. So I'll kick the lead over to that. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I keep grabbing the freaking strings up top where my hand normally sits on the Floyd, but... Nice. Just 
good stuff. Uh, I really need to, to, to get comfortable with the fan fret. Um, I'm sure I will. Uh, Julio said, be patient and, uh, and you'll get it. <laughs> and I'm sure I will. I really do kind of like it's It's a unique feel. Uh, actually, very comfortably. Think about it. Your hand, you know, never, it, it's not, it's shaped kind of like a fan. So, uh, you know, my ugly ass big fingers. But, uh, you know, it just kind of sits over the fretboard and, and really is a very, very comfortable um, playing position. Now, if you guys notice, I play a lot with my wrist only partially bent. Um, that's what happens when you have carpal tunnel uh, starting and it hurts like living shit to, uh, to play in full position twisted around. So, uh, you tend to learn to, to, to change styles a little bit. Uh, Steve Morse, God bless him, he's going through it right now uh, with his right hand and his wrist problems, and, and he's literally not bending the wrist anymore. He's literally moving the arm uh, to do high, uh, picking, and, and uh, I, I still haven't figured out uh, how he's even doing it, but he's doing it. So, But I get the pain. I mean, I have pain and terrible in my left wrist. Uh, anymore. After about an hour, it starts to loosen up. After about two hours, it's finally loosened. My hell, my freaking gig's half over by then. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll just riff out for a few more minutes, and um, we'll call it a day. But uh, Julia Negrini's uh, masterpiece, man. Uh, dude, if you rock, you freaking rock. So anyways, I'll noodle for a little bit. <laughs> fan fret mode. And multi-scale, it's tough getting used to it. It's going to be different.
Anywho, great guitar. Julio, way fucking cool, man. Um, change the subject real quick. Slick audio stuff. Um, you know, guitars are cool, and I know I've shown a lot of them because we've been stalling and wasting some time uh, waiting for this guy right here to uh, get on, get in and get fired up. I'm just about to unload all the software, and yes, it takes a ridiculous amount of freaking time to load all the software that I have, um, which is why I need an R4000 box, because uh, a lot of horsepower means a lot of horsepower. So, uh, software's just about in. Um, uh, making a couple extra tweaks, and uh, then she's gonna go in and we're gonna start doing sessions um, you know, it, it's gonna be mostly Cubase work, guys. So uh, I can tell you right now, um, I need to to get more prof uh, proficient with Pro Tools. But the point is going to be uh, to show you the potentials of what we can do with these machines, uh, as opposed to showing you how to use the DAW. Um, you can go to the manufacturer, Steinberg, uh, Avid, whoever, and learn how to use the DAW. That ain't my freaking problem, man. It's yours. I need to go myself. So, um, you know, I'd love to be playing with these all day. Unfortunately, I've got businesses to run. So, um, in any event, uh, the, uh, the whole point of showing you uh, different stuff, technical term, um, is to uh, basically get to the point of, you know, the idea of how many VIs that we can be running simultaneously and, and, and what they would be. Um, we've, you know, we've got some monsters, uh, you know, Keyscape, uh, Trillion Omnisphere from the Spectrosonics guys, uh, killer plugins, uh, the Native Instruments stuff, uh, or VIs, I mean, um, Native Instruments stuff, uh, I mean, more than I can even begin to sit here and rattle off, I've got ton, too much, I've got too much shit and I have no time to play with it. Um, oh, that sounded really weird, bad. All right, fickle filiac, knock it off. So, um... And then the same goes for plugins. Um, I've got an ass load of plugins, the whole Mercury suite from Ra Waves. So you're going to see plugins that are that are tend to be very intensive. Um, a lot of convolution reverbs, um, you know, that type of thing. And they tend to be really CPU hot and the like. And you're going to see just how many of those things that we can run. And we're going to push the living crap out of these things until this machine damn near blows up. And uh, I don't know, Chris, <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm just kind of excited to see where that threshold is going to be uh, you know even on the, our machine uh, if I have mentioned before this is a six core Xeon uh, it's what I decided to go with I thought it was enough for for my needs um, you do a lot with six core Xeon uh, 128 gig of RAM um, and I do have uh, six drives in this two two terabyte uh, SSDs um, for my uh, the RAID level one, so it's two terabytes worth of data. Uh, that's for my operating system and uh, plugins. And then my VIs are on another RAID one set, a four terabyte uh, regular SATA drive, four terabyte set. And there's another four terabyte uh, uh, one RAID one set uh, that is for the data, uh, for the audio file. So uh, six total drives, uh, which really acts as three. Um, but they're split across, uh, you know, whole idea is we're splitting the, the load across three sets of platters. Guys, you hardly ever use the, the, the load. It's never your disk. That's hardly ever your problem. The problem is uh, is memory and CPU and, uh, you know, and, and audio throughput. So uh, we're going to show you just how well these things do. Um, and uh, that's about it for the day. Because uh, I have a server I've got to reboot. And um, I will uh, talk to you y'all later. Man, be good. Uh, catch you next week. Cheers. Happy Super Bowl.